Lake Effect Weekend continues now. I'm Mitch Tyke. And I'm Audrey Nowakowski. You may not naturally think of magic and comedy as fitting together, but our next guests have created a unique and fun show by doing just that. Chad and Jeff Orr, better known as Two Brothers, One Mind, have developed an act that blends comedy, mental magic, and audience participation in a truly unique way. The Orr brothers hail from Milwaukee, but first started performing together in Los Angeles. They've returned to their roots by hosting a monthly comedy and magic show at the Best Western Airport Hotel on Milwaukee's south side. Milwaukee comedy co-host Matt Kempel began the interview by asking Jeff and Chad about their roots here in Milwaukee. You guys have a very interesting story. You have a monthly show, monthly magic and comedy show at the Best Western uh, right by the airport here in Milwaukee. We do. You guys are both originally from Milwaukee. You grew up here. Your father was a magician, is that correct? Well, my father was kind of a amateur magician. Sure. And uh, he was a funny guy. Not a comedian or anything like that, but he was a really funny guy. And he had a lot of funny friends. And he'd meet a magician and like bring him home and be like, <laughs> show my son this trick. And he knew of a few tricks that he did all his life that he was really good at. That was kind of the influence uh, I had on an early age was through him doing card tricks and stuff and him bringing over magicians and just funny people. And on the comedy side, we had zero censorship in our house. I'm the youngest <laughs> out of four children. And I mean, I remember being like five years old and watching George Carlin and oh, wow. Eddie Murphy Raw. I mean, stuff. I have three kids now. I would never let them in the same room listening to some of the things I grew up listening to. But it's interesting because you guys had that background with your family. You were kind of immersed in it as something you did at, what, family gatherings with your friends. You guys are hanging out and sort of started to develop this talent between yeah, yourselves. ever since we're kids. You know, I'm the youngest. Jeff's the oldest. We always loved magic. Jeff had a passion for it at an early age and him being my oldest brother I always looked up to and I kind of developed the same passion and from just doing these little tricks if you want to call it as kids and to developing a, a full stage show out of uh, out of what we did as children oh yeah we used to do like uh hide an object you know you know have somebody hide something or touch something in a room while chad was out of the room and it's oh, kind of it's kind of we developed from that i kept with magic all my life i'm a total geek chad got into like you know girls and sports and things like yeah, that i was a real but... loser <laughs> <laughs> That's what it started out as. And then I moved out to Los Angeles. And I, you know, I didn't see Chad for most of his growing up life. I was out in L.A. There was always something about, you know, having fun with him as a kid. And then when he got older and was like, yeah, hey, I want to come out to Los Angeles, he lived with me for a while. And uh, we decided to kind of, we we're just joking around about what we did as a kid, you know, some of the times that we had. It would be kind of cool if we expanded this out to an actual show. And that's when we thought about it for a while. And, uh, we ended up doing this for the first time on Venice Beach in California. It's intimidating. When I moved out to Los Angeles, followed his footsteps. We both worked in the film industry. So a lot of our shows were just for friends' private parties and stuff like that. Nothing big, just a, you know, maybe like 30, 40 people of our friends that are, who knows if they're being honest, if we're good or not. And I had a friend from Milwaukee that was coming to uh, spend some time and we're talking hot shots like, oh, yeah, Venice Beach. You ever see those guys on the beach? They do all these crazy things, man. There's... Mm -hmm. People smashing bottles on their heads, fire eaters, all that. Yeah, we'll go try that out. <laughs> <laughs> so he's basically like describing a circus freak show, and he's like, you guys would be perfect for yeah, that. Yeah, this would be great. And, uh, so we make the travel down to Venice Beach that day. It was a beautiful day outside, and they literally have like squares, like there's 200 people walk in that direction, another 150 going that day. It was, it was crazy. It was really intimidating. And we're like, eh, eh. <laughs> And then he know. became like the carnival barker. Two Brothers, One Mind, starting right now. And he just starts yelling. And the next thing, like, snap of a finger, 50 people, 150 people, boom, boom, wow. boom. We're like, I guess we're we doing We were literally show. surrounded. It was it was crazy. And I just looked at Chad. I go, well, right, it's on. I guess we're doing it. And we killed it that day. Nailed you know? it. I'm not saying we kill it every day. But we killed it that day <laughs> enough to say, all right, well, let's, let's really make this happen. And then from there, we found this uh, hookah bar, coffee house place, that had a stage. They were doing open mics and things. And we ended up taking a night there and promoting our show through there, bringing in comedians as well, and magicians or who are sometimes singers. We, we kept it really open. It was amazing. Our host for that, Jeff Hopkins, he got the most amazing talent to come to this hookah bar for us. I mean, people that were, you know, national acts that are coming to this hookah bar, and there's ice being crunched in the back, <laughs> right in the middle of the <laughs> perfect <laughs> conditions for doing live yeah, shows. I mean, it's great. No, and it, we just would take... This weekly show that was free to the public that actually got halfway decent, you know, acts and 
we would take the best of the acts and say, hey, let's do a monthly show at the theater. What was the transition like going from that sort of public setting to all of a sudden you're doing clubs and theaters? The, the major thing for us was collecting emails. L.A. is really big in this. If you want to come perform, you have to bring seven to ten people. Yep. That is it all the time. We're filling this coffee place with all these people. My thing was I need emails from everybody Yeah. so I can reach out to them in the future for future shows, blah, blah, blah. And building that email list to just a couple people to several thousand was huge. You think a lot of your success came from the idea that you're, one, you're doing something very unique that a lot of other people are not doing. So did you find it easier to grow that audience or did was it more difficult because people uh, didn't know what it was? It's easier to grow, but more work behind the scenes that you don't see. Getting shows and producing shows on the back end, they don't see that it takes a thousand emails to yeah. every festival county fair in the state to get three county fairs to say yes. You know, so we started producing this monthly show that was making a few bucks for all the performers. And then we did a quarterly show, which was like big magic show where we brought in bigger names. And then that was really kind of making a name for ourselves in North Hollywood. And then this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a database. I'm gonna research every single university in the entire country. I'm gonna find out who the activities director is and who's in charge of the activities board or programming board, whatever you wanna call it for each different university. I'm going to find out who it is. I'm going to send them a personal email. And I did that. I got every single university. I did that for every single comedy club. I did that for every single corporation. That's a full-time job in itself. (laughs) It's impressive. Well, then you complicate the fact now also that I'm coming in from Vancouver. This was when we were both stationed in Los Angeles. That's why we started doing this Milwaukee Magic and Comedy show, really, was to create a small hub here. Yeah. You guys both have experience working reality television shows and things like that behind the scenes of Hollywood. Has any of that helped with what you guys are doing now? I think so. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Especially uh, last season, they invited us to come out for uh, America's Got Talent, and they flew us out to do the professional, you know, in front of the celebrity judges and all that. And just knowing the behind the scenes, all the shots and the hours it takes to produce, you know, 30 second segments. Yes. You know, just little things like that. And I think that helps us not get our hopes up too high if we get like a call for a show like that. I guess kind of helps us keep us in check. (laughs) So walk me through your show. What's kind of the format like? What are people going to experience? We're the only mind readers that can't read your mind. We can only read each other's. We're two brothers, one mind. First first mentalist and only to transmit a thought across the Las Vegas Strip. This is true. This is us. So I heard from your website. Let's say we do have a theater of like a couple hundred people sitting around. Everybody start drawing stuff. Birthday, name animal, whatever suggestion that you want to write down. People are pulling random things out of their pocket, drawing random things, and then it, the show builds up. It just keeps getting bigger and better until we're finally out of the room. Start limiting our senses from the beginning of the show to the end. So by the end of the show, we're not even in the same room when the final transmission happens, if you will. But I think we should show you guys. Yeah, sure. Yeah? Let's take a look. Can we get Rachel in here? Yeah, Rachel, would you mind helping out with this? Let's see, Matt. If you can uh, write your... The birthday, your month, your date, the year. If you think I Googled it, you can do totally it like possible. give it give it like a week or two off. Let's see here, Rachel. Why don't we have you write three single digit numbers? Just a single digit, single digit, single digit, right on top of each other, just like that. Keep it covered so I can't see it, okay? And then somewhere over, d- draw like an animal too. Right. <laughs> Is it okay if your artistic skills are not that good? Like That's perfect. I'll just better. interpret them to how whatever I think they are anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've kept it hidden. I did not see. I can't see through your boards. Yeah, you make sure you guys can that. see that you um, can't see through the boards or anything like this. It's nothing it's to verified. do with it. Verified. I do have a blindfold here. Can you verify <laughs> this? Uh, look through it. I cannot see through it. Okay. <laughs> All right. For the radio, we'll describe. He is putting the blindfold on. He so is. So officially has the blindfold on. <laughs> okay. We're just, we're just going to do a little bit <laughs> of warm up here. All right. Try and tell the audience here what these uh, three numbers add up to that I'm looking at right now. If I'm not mistaken, these three numbers that Rachel wrote down, they add up to... Just look at it, focusing on them. Is that 19? Yes. 19? Yes. You guys have to verify that for everybody. <laughs> yes, that is correct. <laughs> My God, we're amazing here. Quickly, Chad, <laughs> name the number I'm pointing at right now. All right, you're looking at the number three. Don't say anything else. The next number is a seven. Is it three, seven, and a nine? Is that right? Yes. Yes, very <laughs> impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please tell everybody what the uh, animal is that I'm holding up in front of the camera right now. Uh, you're sending me... Uh, He's sending me a bunch of water. Is this a uh, sending me a fish? Yes, <laughs> it is a, it is a fish. fish. 
Unbelievable, right? <laughs> that is very impressive. Thank you very Especially much. Especially since it was poorly rendered as well. Yeah, that's actually fantastic. <laughs> we, we, we've seen worse, we do better. by all means. <laughs> you guys liking this? Yes. Yes. All right, see if you can tell him what uh, part of the year he's born. You're sending me, um, uh, like, leaves are changing colors right now on a tree. Does that make any sense? It does. Oh, you're sending me my birthday month, which is October. Yes. Right? So this is October? Okay. It's October 29th. This is 1974. Who never a perfect show. <laughs> never a perfect show. We always actually preempt everything. We never have a perfect show. I thought that was incredibly impressive, but I'm curious. You say you don't always have a perfect show. Have you ever had a show that just completely fell apart on you guys? Or maybe the better question is, have you had somebody in the audience cause a show to not work? Not, not really. We have fans of the show that will come multiple times and bring random stuff in their just pockets. Just to see if they can... We trip you up. Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely. We had somebody bring an urn. Who brings an <laughs> urn, right? We have had somebody bring, uh, just in this last show, um, imitation crab. A bag of imitation Imit crab. Bag. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they have a lot of fun with it. Uh, fun for you guys, too, because, yeah, because it, it keeps it, it fresh. And right. This we kept hopefully the pretty crab basic fresh. for the radio, what we're doing today. <laughs> but we try to make it harder and harder on ourselves throughout the, uh, the show, both in the scope of what we're trying to transmit and our proximity to each other. For my final question, I'm just curious, comedy and magic on the surface, I feel like, are two completely different things. But the more you put those two things together, they seem to work so well together. What do you guys feel is the real secret to having magic and comedy kind of be uh, something that works together for you guys? I think it goes well. Everyone wants to be entertained. And uh, we make a very strong effort to bring in some of the best comedians and, and magicians around the world to come here. But with that said, it's just being entertained by something new. And that's what we try to bring. It's a different show every month, which is also nice. With our show too, it's how engaged do you really want to be? We're not that typical magician wearing a tuxedo that is presenting this very serious magic point of view. Nothing wrong with that. That's just not who we are. We're just two brothers that uh, are on stage having a lot of fun. We're going to show you something that's pretty neat, and you're going to have fun with us. Enjoy the ride. And I think we always go into the uh, the audience first, really. They're they're not our audience. They're our fans. So, you know, we go out there. I always greet the audience before the show. You know, say hi to everybody. Make sure that they're feeling comfortable. So when they're ready to begin, when we're ready to hit, hit stage, they're already, like, kind of got some sort of feeling for each other. We've already been introduced. There's something that just makes it seem like a different show. What's going on here? Now they're just coming out to talk to us, and then we reassemble after that, right? And then when we go around and we actually, like we just did here today with the boards and kind of do drawings and stuff like that, I'm moving through the audience. And somebody came up to me uh, after a show and said, I really like the way you guys do that instead of bringing people up onto the stage because now everybody gets a chance to have a front-of-the-stage view of what's going on at some point during that part because of Because we're all part, over the part audience. Of the, part of the show, right? Well, and I see that being so important because, one, you're putting that audience to ease right away. One of the number one fears people have is being on stage and having to talk in front of people. It's so often that, like, the front row of my shows, nobody ever wants to sit in the front row. And the number one reason that people will answer when I ask, why don't you want to sit in the front row, is, oh, well, I don't want to be singled out or I don't want the comedian to talk to me or anything like that. And then there's this stipulation that people see in the movies, like, oh, you sit in the front row and then the whole comedy act is about that one person. And occasionally that will happen, but <laughs> not typically. So what you're able to do is people come in and right away they're feeling relaxed. They're like, oh, these are just two regular guys that are cool. And like you say, you're not coming in in the tuxedo, <laughs> sawing women in half and like dramatic music. And it's very serious. I guess my influence is Steve Martin from yeah. Leap, Leap of Faith. Yeah. You see that where he's like, <laughs> I think that's kind of like we're, we're trying to, to create this, this church of two brothers, one mind, if you will. <laughs> For That's a moment, anything reference. can happen, and you know we're all here together. And you'll see deal. that if you come to our show. Is in the beginning, we're like, "Hey, if you're behind us, you have to yell at two brothers, one mind.' If you see something you like, yeah, we get them. By chanting the end of the show, people are yelling two it's, brothers, one mind.' It's, it's, it's a, lot it's of a fun. good time. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for being with us today. It's always exciting to be able to talk to folks about what they do, and what you guys do is just so unique and fun. Uh, 
uh, I really look forward to seeing a show. Yeah, come so on thanks down. again for having us. Back, Rachel. Chad and Jeff Orr of Two Brothers, One Mind spoke with WUWM comedy contributor Matt Kempel as a part of our Milwaukee comedy series. WUWM's Rachel Owens also jumped in to demonstrate their technique, and you can find the photo verification and more information on the Orr Brothers Monthly Magic Show on our website, wuwm.com. Thank you.